Okay, we're going to get started here. Um, I'm actually going to start on this sideboard um, over the, the CS100.com site. Um, as you know, today today we begin Chapter 8, the Internet and the World Wide Web. And we're going to look at these kind of in detail. We're not really going to focus on the networking aspects. We covered those in Chapter 7. Um, although on Thursday we are going to have a, um, an in-class lab. We're really going to... Thursday, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> I'm off to a rolling start this Monday morning. Here we go. All righty. Um, first, take a look at this page. You're probably seeing something different there um, up top below my banner. Um, There's something on the client side. I, I haven't, I've, I've had it disabled because I didn't want, really, I didn't want to entertain questions on it prior to this. Um, that is SEO. Quake, okay? So I'll repeat that because this is real important for you. So the toolbar there um, is SEO Quake, um, so up here. And it's giving a lot of search engine optimization information, but a lot of other things too. And it operates on the client side. And I, I have quite a few, you know, plugins, Chrome plugins up here. I have HTML tidy so I can quickly check, you know, errors on a page, things like this. Because as we talk about, start speaking about search engine optimization and web usability, well, we've introduced what standards do, and writing code, especially web pages, to, to be W3C compliant has a big impact. If they're W3C compliant, they can be rendered correctly on any device. So if you develop a website that isn't W3C compliant, you're selling yourself short. Someone will pull it up on their phone. They won't be able to see it. You lost that customer. Okay? So I use a couple. I use HTML Tidy um, and, and a few other things up here. And we'll slowly look at them. But a lot of this functionality is also built into SEO Quake. And I'm not really going to go into it. But you can get information on the, the site itself. Here you see my Google page rank zero. I'm at dead bottom here at CS100.com. But of course, I don't really care. This is really just, just for the class kind of as a resource. But if you are in an e-commerce perspective, you better hope that your Google page rank is not zero. Okay? Uh, so that means uh, who finds you? Tied to you. How well you tied to Google when somebody references a particular word. Search. Search. Okay? We look at search, we're going to look at search from two perspectives. We're going to look at it from our perspective when we try to find things. And that's where our ability to use the tools that Google provides us, the phrase search, you know, the, the in-text operators, things of this nature, and also just understanding how the page rank system works. But then from the corporate side, you want people to find you. I always I use the example, someone in California or Armenia or Pakistan isn't typing in hvcc.edu. The only way they're going to find Hudson Valley is through search, which depends on my search engine rankings, my page rankings. Okay, so there are things that you can do pretty, pretty much innocuously to raise your page rankings. You don't have to pay, and it has been found that search engine optimization is eight times more profitable than pay-per-click. Pay-per-click, of course, I'm paying someone. You're going to put my banner ad on some Facebook page, but of course it's only going to be in one part of the world. You know, it just doesn't, and you're paying someone a lot of money. And as soon as your campaign is over, that pay-per-click campaign, I pay so much for three months, it's done. Search engine optimization is forever. Okay? So, um, some other things here, because we're going to do in our networking labs, we'll perform a who is. And today, security is everything. And there are phishing attempts. There's, of course, adware, spyware, all these things, which we're going to look at. But just being able to correctly verify someone's identity, because I'm sure everyone in this room has had phishing attempts come into your in inbox. The ability to confirm that this website is who they say they are is very important. Um, so. Um, other things here, and I'll let you um, go through it. You know, diagnosis, it'll go through and tell you what you can do to improve your site. So, again, for I know this is SEO Quake. It's a Chrome plugin. So, SEO, search engine, short for search engine optimization. Quake, of course, is the plugin. Okay. So, I do, if you're in the web design curriculum, 
have it on your desktop today. Okay? You need to start learning how to use these tools. If you go on and you buy a, a website or a name or a domain and stuff from, uh, like, can you still use these? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, they're, they're, they're independent, yes. Like I bought well, one that says, okay, here's how you can build your website, and I'm using their tools, which I found to be very, like, I got a publisher on my desktop. Mm -hmm. I should have never asked them for that. Okay. But nonetheless, my point is, is when I get this thing, it, it'll help me whatever uh, website I'm Yep. Trying. And I'm going to make you answer your own question. Oh, okay. When you purchase a domain, whatever, you create a website, is that client or server? When you create a when you create a website, I'm on the server. you're on the server. Whereas this is a plugin from my Chrome browser the client. The two are separate. Okay. okay? So I'm using tools on the client side in web design. You will assess from every platform. How does it look on a Droid? How does it look on an iPhone? How does it look in Windows 98, Windows XP? By the way, have we also already gotten a tool that will allow us to look at it from many different computer platforms. Virtualization. Okay, another application of VirtualBox. I install Windows 98, XP, 2000, Vista, 7, and I can look at the web pages with each one. With each one. Just get the browser of that time period, which you still can, and don't update. Okay? To see how so, are not People in the third world are looking at this through a Windows 98 box yep. or an Amiga or Tandy. Who knows? Um, okay, so here we go. Um, so I'm going to lecture topics here. And I'm going to scroll down to um, Internet and WWW. Okay, so the textbook does a, a decent job of introducing the history of the Internet and the World Wide Web. And again, we now know the two are different. The Internet is the infrastructure, okay? It's the networking infrastructure, the backbone, the devices. Whereas the World Wide Web is that layer of information, accessible information that uses the Internet. And we know that there are many different things that use the Internet protocols, TCP IP. We know FTP, um, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, HTTP for, of course, the information. Okay, the Internet. Again, these, the Wikipedia actually has very good, um, I've, I've found better, but Wikipedia has very good um, accounting of the history of the Internet. The Internet, of course, came out of research and then was really driven by the, the United States government that wanted a fault-tolerant network that could survive in the event of, you know, catastrophe, whether it's natural debt disasters or nuclear war or whatever. Again, going back to our networking, we know how do we provide fault tolerance? Redundancy. Redundancy. What is the Internet? Mesh network. Redundant. Okay? And the architecture, of course, is packet-based because it actually, packet-based networks use the bandwidth more effectively than a circuit switch. Okay? So we have this notion of all the information that's traveling is cut up into these uni um, uniform size packets and they're routed independently. So even if they encounter congestion or a down network, they can route around it. Okay? Partial net mesh network. It knows enough to reroute. I mean, it's in the words. I mean, it's in the right uh, software tool. Oh, it's in the protocol. So well, th well, think about how this, real basically, Yes. you think... Every router has a list of the routers that are attached to it. So you kind of propagate, okay, paths from a source to a destination. Well, I can go, if I can't go this route, I can go through this router, and this router knows the way to get to that destination. So you can think, see how this is a distributed type system, okay, really adaptive, because it can actually identify congestion and then route around it. Okay. Now, the World Wide Web, there have been, and going back to the Internet, by the way, um, Internet, you know, we, we trace it back to the 60s or so, you know, and really, it, it really gained uh, momentum, 70s, 80s, and then, of course, the public adoption in the 90s. Um, note that this was not the first digital network. Does anybody know what the first digital 
communications network was? What replaced the Pony Express? Oh. Telegraph. Telegraph. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. No, no. We 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 we, we forget about it, right? Or the first right, the first electronic communications. It wasn't really digital. No one wanted to learn more school. Right. So, um, okay. So there's the internet. World Wide Web, of course, is this information that exists on the internet. Um, and again, telephone isn't the same. Telephone is no. wired, and it's all in, it's, um, circuit switched. Circuit switched, so it's not smart enough to ever reroute. Um, no, they could do it at the switching office. Okay, you know, if 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 they're managing it internally, well, let's let's not go there. Sorry, that's okay. No, it's all right. Um, okay, so I do recommend your, but if you look at the World Wide Web, and really. The evolution of the World Wide Web is, is just, it, it, from a speed standpoint, breathtaking. When you look at, you know, 95, 93, actually the launch of Mosaic, widespread adoption in the mid-90s, you know, corporations using it to broadcast information, very much like the television or the radio, but then real quick realizing that, you know, this was not the end all, and it was actually never the vision of the creator, Tim Berners-Lee. He always saw a two-way participatory conversation-based medium. So real quickly into Web 2.0 technologies. Um, and then, but we can look at it from, you know, other, other conceptual basis. When we think about information on the web, we, you know, we, we think of the Internet as the Internet of Information. The World Wide Web is the Internet of Information. And then most recently, Internet of People, with social media. And we are about to see the full emergence and, and maturation of the Internet of Things. And to this extent, I actually highlighted it because it is big. When devices themselves get internet addresses. And of course, what paved the way for this, or what was necessary, was the transition from IPv4 to IPv6. IPv4 just did not have the address space to give everything on this planet an internet address. And when, as soon as you give everything an internet address, well, things become more functional, easier to use. You know, usability can go, can go, can rise. However, again, we have to think security and ethics, you know. Our information will be widespread of where we are and what we're doing, you know. James gets up and opens the refrigerator at, you know, an ungodly time in the morning, makes coffee, you know, and my daily life is just documented. Everywhere I go, everything I do, every device I use. But, of, co of course, recall the um, Google Glasses. Um, video we saw. The, the man walked to the subway and the glasses identified, because it was close to the sensor, that the subway was out and it immediately rerouted him. He had to walk to wherever he had to go. So that type of aware environment can provide more usability features. Okay, so it's always going to be a trade-off. You know, convenient, easy to use, and ethics and security, other things. Um, I would read about IPv6. Uh, if you're in the System and Network Administration program, definitely read IPv6. This is where you're, well, you'll be existing from this point on. Um, so now we're going to jump right to search. And, and here's where I kind of deviate from the text and provide quite a bit more information. So here's search. OK. Now, I just grabbed this graphic, because I've, I've known about it for a long time, because it, it really is good. Uh, explains it kind of in, in a humorous uh, point of way, or, or perspective. Um, recall, when I talk about search and search engine optimization, from the user's perspective, search is important because it allows us to find things that we want to find. From the server, from the company's perspective, it allows prospective markets to find us, okay? Again, nobody from Armenia is typing in CISS100.com. Nobody in Saratoga is typing that in either. Uh, but, so it's all about your search ranking. ranking. Um, so, I, I recommend... many people want to find you? What, yes. How many people find you? How long they... And now I think it's how long they stay on the page, too. Again, the, the Google page rank system is proprietary. 
you know, it's it's not, it's it's intricate details are not known. Okay, it's exactly. only Google knows. They're not going to release that. Truthfully, we don't want them to release it. As soon as you release it, people can take advantage of it. And this used to, this used to happen with with meta tags. Okay, um, they were back, you know, in the, the early two thousands. I mean, I, I don't know where it is right now, but I mean, I hate to say it, it's it's unfortunate. But porn was one of the most highly searched after um, sites, and people would put, you know, those type of tags in their meta metadata, which was terribly unscrupulous. And conversely, the other it would go the other way too. You know, you get people manipulated search through the meta tags. Google no longer allows that. When it comes to, as you just stated, you know, it's, it's how many people seek you out, okay? But Google does um, acknowledge that some people have more of a vote. So, so this presentation here is from kind of like, you know, it does it as from the perspective of running for a prom king. Um, so one of the things it says, well, Google recognizes the authority of governments. So if go governments continually seek out your site, okay, it's credible. Okay? In this case, I think, I think the author uses the, the, the high school principal. If the principal decides that you're going to be prom king, you're going to be prom king. It's going to rig action. Um, it says, you know, depending on who it is, you know, if you're getting votes for a prom king, I think he uses the um, the analogy of if the, the high school band votes for you, well, their, their votes don't really matter anyway. Um, and then there's also some canceling out. You know, if you vote for someone and someone else votes for you, well, your votes kind of cancel out. Great. You have this little community, and you're each accessing each other's website, but the rest of the world really doesn't care. You're, so your site is not going to be ranked higher. So the, the font is a little bit small here, and I'm not going to reread it uh, or read it out in class here. So please read this because it really does describe um, how the Google page rank search works. So if especially, you know, we have a few people in the program that already have their businesses up and running and websites. You need to study this. Um, so now, the default search in Google is the phrase search. And by default, it searches for the title in web pages and it searches Without, throughout the text of a web page. Again, they're no longer really using the metadata for, for, for your page ranking. So looking at this, note that Google search, the case is insensitive. So caps, all caps motherboard is the same as smaller caps. And again, this is the basis of HTML, so it's kind of consistent with that. Um, Google may offer you, and if you spell something wrong, it may, in its database, and when, as soon as we get the database, we're going to realize how good the Google database is. It may recommend an alternate spelling for you to assist you with your search usability. The default Boolean con uh, connector is AND. So if you search for ski, snowboard, what is actually being um, queried to the database or, or submitted to the database is ski and snowboard. You can explicitly use the OR connector, but note it is case sensitive. Okay, so if you search ski lowercase or snowboard, it's going to search for ski and OR and snowboard. It's going to take each individual term and, and use an AND. So if you explicitly want the OR connector, make sure you capitalize it. <clears throat> okay, um, Google supports or implicitly supports stemming. So if you search for, in this example, diet, search for diets and dietary things of this nature, it'll truncate the word and search for the root, which is very important. Now that's not the same as the meta or whatever you say. No, no. Meta, meta by its very meaning is, or metadata is information about data, okay? So you have a web page and you're seeing what it has, but there's also other information about that web page that you're not seeing, okay? It's data about data. I presented this in, uh, well, it was referenced in applications, okay? Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word, you, you create a document. You have your document, but of course, I don't know why Microsoft calls it behind the scenes or be, whatever, whatever they're calling it, but you have your information, the author's information. Oh, wow. When it was created, 
Okay, mm -hmm. that's metadata, data about data. But we're going to see that in, in even more detail when we get to databases. Okay, so that's metadata. Okay, so stemming is very important. So really, we don't have to, you know, because you're always thinking, well, should I put diets or should I search, search for diet or diets or whatever? Google's going to do that for us anyway. Okay, so it's going to do some predictive. So you don't put your, you've got to put your keywords in. Don't you? Yes, your keywords. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can use wildcards, and this is very important, especially when I start using quotes. When I start looking for ex exact, explicit phrases. Okay, I want three blind mice, and I want all three words next to each other. Okay, to limit the search results. Uh, but of course, here I can use a wild card as well. Um, and here is the example with: if I really want to search for to be or not to be, that exact phrase I enclose it in quotes. Okay, and the biggie. Okay. Pretty much, and this is what Turnitin, Turnitin software does. It grabs portions of whatever paper you wrote, puts it in quotes, and goes out and searches. Okay? And sees if it is out there on the internet already. So, um, I can, Google also supports field search restrictions. So if I want to search for something just in the title, I can proceed it with in title colon. And then typically, if you're looking in the title, you, you may want to use quotes, you may not. Depends how you want to do it. Okay? I can search in the text, in anchors, okay? So for all kinds of media, in a particular site. Okay? You want to search in Hudson Valley site. Um, so in a URL, and we'll talk about this when we get to search engine optimization. Your URLs, your domain, should be, should match what you're doing. Okay? Um, shouldn't be tricky at all. Okay, don't play any tricks, tricks with words, things like this. You know, put your domain out if you can, if you can get it, with exactly what your site is doing. Okay, people think it's cute. I'm going to do this. It's kind of a word play on something. But if you're trying to get commerce, other people are not thinking cutesy like we are. Um, and and keep it short as well. Keep your URL short. Um, if I want to search for a particular file types. Okay, and note that the full list of Google operators is here. Okay, so there are other things here. I'm not going to read through. Um, real important is exclude a word. Okay, some words are so common they just bring you up with results everywhere. So the ability to exclude a word can be very important. Um, include similar words, and now. Similar words is, is very, you know, <clears throat> it's straightforward. I haven't really presented yet or even introduced this semester on semantic search, really where we're going. And that's based on ontologies. Okay, right now we're based on taxonomies. We tag words, keywords, okay? But let me give you an example. If I were to search for sailboats, of course, it would stem it, it would take off the S, so I'd be searching for sailboat. And Google would retrieve everything, you know, with sailboat in the title, sailboat in the ta text. And that's just a taxonomic keyword. It's not a semantic understanding, really moving into an ontology, which is a domain description. Because I also have sloops, right, type of sailboat, yawls, catches, schooners, on and on and on. Whereas if I search for sailboats, it'd be nice to have all those other categories come up as well. But Google's just going to search for sailboats. Okay? So this is the move from pattern matching search to semantic search, an understanding of the subject. Okay? So if I search for sailboats this, in a semantic web, Google would say, well, not, well, a schooner is a type of sailboat, so return schooners. A yawl is a type of sailboat, return yawls. So now we're getting into the ontology, which has, among other things, two relationships, the is a relationship and the has a relationship. So I just wanted to introduce that, and that's where we're heading, and that's really working with knowledge. Now we're really getting into knowledge creation. Okay, um, <clears throat> so other things. 
Now note, rather than memorizing all this stuff, if you're doing research, academic research, just bookmark Google's advanced search. Okay? So that is there. Okay? So there's the advanced search. Now, let's go to search engine optimization. Now, I'm not really going to present much um, from here. If you're in the web design, if you have your own company, whatever, you need to read this. Okay, so come on up. There we go. Okay, so, um, so this will also detail some of the history that has taken place in the early part of the web to get your website recognized and, and um, in the search, in the, in the rankings, you would actually submit your website to one of the um, search engines and then they'd go through and they'd crawl your site, things of this nature. Now, we also haven't really looked at the web from a standpoint of how it's evolved into the dynamic entity it is because today nobody is using static web pages. You have a back-end database, you have that middle tier business logic, and then the you know web server. In our case, we use MySQL, PHP for the most part, um, and then the Apache web server. And as such, a web crawler does not have permission to go through your database. So when I request a page from ESPN.com, there's not an ESPN.com HTML page that I'm getting. My request goes there and their server puts it together. Grab all these components from the database, put it together, and, and mark it up, of course, with HTML, and then send that page out to me. So that page is being constructed dynamically. Okay, so if you have this type of architecture, a web, a, a web crawler is not going through and capturing all that information that's hidden in your database. We're gonna see when we install the LAMP, our LAMP stack, that you have private to you, only, known only to you, the password for your database. You're not revealing that to Google. So you need to provide some other mechanism for them to actually correctly categorize and crawl your web. And we'll look at that later. So this kind of gives the, um, the background up here. And then here are the, the, the SEO tips, OK? Um, keep it simple, name things appropriately, um, update your site, because again, if I go back, um, you can see somewhere up here my age, okay, um, of when this was created, okay, because again, Google is going to reward fresh content in its page rank. If you just have a page out there that never gets updated, Google is going to infer that it's really not that important. Okay, so. Okay, so that is kind of the introduction there. We'll come back. There are more.